Very, very nice. So uh, as we have uh, two operators, two speakers as operators, so I would suggest that we can discuss with them uh, online during the live cases. I would like to invite my co-chair, Robert Chihak. He's coming, okay. So we will continue with the two live cases and we will finish our workshop, our symposium uh, by two live cases. One is running from Dan Victor's lab, and uh, he'll be showing us cardioneural ablation for the patient with a syncope. And the second case will be run by Peter Peichel, and it will be showing bipolar uh, ablation of the VT. So, actually, we are ready in the first um, lab, and Dan Victor is online probably. Dan, can you hear us? And we can see you. Yeah, I can, I can uh, hear you and I can see you as well. Yes, no, can you get the uh, audio a little bit more? Yeah. <laughs> so can we, can we start? Uh, yeah, yes. you, you see us. So yeah. uh, what the status uh, yeah, all right. where, where you are and let's introduce the case and what you are, the strategy yeah, you are uh, doing, okay? Yeah, yeah. May I, may I have uh, we have presentation in PowerPoint? May I my, may I have it uh, on main screen? All right. So hello he hello everybody. We scheduled two patients uh, for workshop. One for uh, uh, one is uh, just now here, and the other with uh, syncope, uh, reflex syncope. The other with functional sinus bradycardia was per patient. So you will see the syncope patient. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Peter, who is with me, to present the patient. Okay, okay ne ne next slide. Next slide. This patient is a male who is currently 51 years old without any comorbidities. The history of syncope takes us uh, 10 years ago when patient was about 40 years old. Uh, the character of syncope was typically uh, vasovagal with typical prodromes, and the total charge of syncope was sporadic at that time, four episodes in the period between 2007 and 2010. ECG and echocardiography examination was normal, until test which was performed in April 2010 proved cardio inhibitory syncope after nitroglycerin administration and a sinus arrest with maximum pause of 17 seconds. Because of a young age and, uh, and uh, sporadic syncope, the treatment was conservative, focusing on education and lifestyle modifications. Next slide. In the meantime, the patient was completely asymptomatic uh, until last month when he lost the consciousness while driving the vehicle and caused a severe car accident in which another participant perished. Next slide. The TIL test performed last month proved cardio inhibitory syncope after two minutes uh, of tilting without nitroglycerin provocation. As you can see in this ECG monitoring in a third line, you can see initially short sinus RS up to four to five seconds, with subsequent very long sinus RS about 27 seconds already in a supine position. Next slide. Uh, the other supportive uh, argument for a, a cardioneural ablation indication is a positive atropine test. After administration of atropine, uh, there was uh, acceleration of heart rate from 49 uh, to 93 beats per minute. Uh, and the moreover, shortening of uh, PQ interval uh, demonstrated significant parasympathetic effect on the cardiac conduction system. Next slide. Uh, what is uh, scheduled in this procedure? Uh, cardioneural ablation in general anesthesia performed as radio frequency catheter procedure using 3D navigated system and facilitated, facilitated by intracardiac echo. The approach will be B atrial ganglionated plexi ablation and at, at empirical site uh, guided by extracardiac vagal nerve stimulation. And the main end, end point will be complete denervation of sinus and atrial ventricles. Note. Next slide. All right, thank you. And this slide shows uh, who is on board with us. Uh, Helena is uh, at the Pruka and Carto as usual. And we have anesthesia uh, team from anesthesiology. And there are also our two uh, EP nurses. Uh, and that's 
the end of uh, introduction and uh, now we will show you what we uh, done so far so uh, i don't know what you, what do you see probably it would be nice uh, if you could see the uh, carto uh, carto screen all right now we uh, we are looking at modified pa view on by atrial map there is anatomical map uh, of left atrium uh, with annotation or tagging of uh, ostia of pulmonary vein veins there is also act, uh, electroanatomical map of right atrium with uh, activation mapping of sinus node and there is a small map uh, at the bottom uh, for a proximal coronary sinus and I think this is uh, everything and the other structure the other structures will be uh, we, we will comment during the procedure of course these uh, light green points are uh, uh, are points uh, when the uh, phrenic nerve uh, uh, with phrenic nerve capture this is important to talk prior to procedure because subsequently we go for myo relaxation to be able to do this uh, high frequency uh, vagus nerve stimulation extra cardiac which, which normally causes severe cramps so the patient uh, should be nicely rela uh, relaxated and uh, of course uh, it, uh, in such a scenario the phrenic nerve ca capture can't be uh, can't be uh, verified uh, during the procedure so it is uh, it is talked uh, before and i would like to highlight uh, the, the most important uh, point for uh, AV uh, uh, sinus nodal denervation, and you see two tags. Uh, uh, please show by by mouse, probably, Helena. Uh, there is one uh, one uh, point. This is not his because the <laughs> color is like his, but this is point at the anterior antrum of right superior vein, and uh, this is strictly contralaterally to the other point, uh, which is very posterior and uh, when we look at uh, uh, right atrium map only uh, please look at right atrium map only and uh, in pure pa view so it is like uh, it is centered uh, this is the most posterior part of uh, of right atrium and uh, in terms of horizontal position we are at the level of uh, roof of right appendage these points, this is not fan map, so the uh, right appendage is not visible here. But uh, you can, if you, uh, I don't know, can you see uh, ultrasound? No, ice, ice view, uh, ice screen. Because, yeah, so yeah, larger just now, we just want to show. All right, so. Now you see the catheter position at the really roof of right appendage, and uh, so these uh, blue tags belongs to to this position. And now I, I am pulling back and approaching to the ridge between roof of right appendage and SVC, and this is this is the optimum uh, vertical level for uh, for uh, seeking this uh, right atrium sweet uh, sweet spot and. Uh, if we go, uh, go, please go uh, post PA view, and this this dark violet point is the point when we probably start uh, the ablation after after a while, and we complement of course with ablation from the from from the left side. Uh, we we struggled struggled uh, very. Um, we try to of course as in all our procedures to get to both jugular internal jugular veins. But it was not possible in this patient uh, for left internal jugular vein, and we may show you. Uh, we have also some angiography loops. Můžeme tam dát tu smyčku. Nevím, jestli to vidět. Yeah, you see. Can you see this? Yeah. You so you see quite competent valves uh, uh, at the, uh, going uh, in, in the direction to ex either internal or external jugular vein. And we were able to, uh, to engage the using some subselector, sub using uh, right coronary uh, catheter to go there. 
but uh, even with use, uh, use of hydrophilic wire, we get to some superior vein, but it was not the main main trunk of uh, of uh, left jugular. So that uh, this angiography, to uh, you see, we 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 got uh, slightly superior this this uh, this valvular area, but it was not possible to to get into the right uh, right vein. So we it uh, we should do all these testing with uh, right vagus only. And uh, prior to ablation, oh, 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 uh, I would like to show you the uh, the response to high frequency stimulation. Uh, please, uh, please uh, show the uh, show the fluoro, and uh, we will adjust the position uh, position of the catheter. All right, so this is. Deeper R, this is deeper RAO, and now uh, I will adjust uh, the catheter. It is like bend it slightly posterior, slightly posterior medially, and this is just below the base of the uh, the uh, jugular foramen. I think this is optimum position, and uh, I I can tell you in advance that. Even with this perfect position, there is only weak response of sinus node. This is rather unexpected. Uh, there is some response of uh, uh, weak response of sinus node and some reasonable response of AV node. And we may show this uh, just online in real time. So please uh, slow down the uh, paper speed or sweet, sweet speed. And uh, we should see the uh, Bruca on main screen. All right, and we may start. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dobře. All right, and yeah. Wait a moment. Uh, so, ch so ch check the. Uh, you see that, that there is almost uh, again. This is not good example to demonstrate, but there is only very small. Or weak. Uh, Can you show us the result? Slowing of, of sinus from let's say screen? 50 or maximum 50 or uh, to 32, and there is uh, not long AV AV block, because usually in 80% of patients we we are able by adjusting the position of the catheter to to achieve let's say. Eight or ten seconds of sinus now arrest. Now with this and, case, uh, shortly, even longer, because we have everything uh, prepared uh, and we don't want to AV block, spend but one hour just this waiting. Is, this was not possible in this case. So I think that's that's all in terms of like preparation of patients and uh, testing uh, 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 and the testing of extra cardiac. Uh, uh, vagus nerve stimulation. I have an information from the other room that, that they are. They are almost ready to show the uh, show their case. So, so if if we, if we if we can switch uh, to the other room and then maybe for 10 minutes only, and they are ready to show and finalize the case, and then we, we will go back and uh, devote more time to this uh, to the cardio. Okay, okay. If there are hurry on, so we can switch to another room. Okay, so, so please. Can you introduce your case? Okay, teď jsme. Okay, hello. We can see uh, here's the lab number four. Perfect. So uh, let me first introduce the patient for for this uh, morning. We prepared this one. So we have uh, ablation using bipolar uh, ablation system from Osipka, and the patient history is 45-year-old male with a history of diabetes, arterial hypertension. Sorry for the check spelling. I did it in this morning. And he has also sleep apnea. He's uh, obese, uh, with body mass index of 38. And uh, his problem why he uh, do care is the monotopic uh, premature ventricular beats uh, with the halter burden of 19-20%. Uh, 
He has a history of coronary artery disease with uh, a PCI of uh, LAD uh, to three years ago. Uh, he has diffuse hypo hypokinesia, uh, believed to be mostly due to the ectopy because there was no severe uh, uh, kind of uh, ischemia. Uh, it was a kind of mild stenosis and he's on the river oxabound. And uh, uh, sorry, the, 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 dose, the, the medication is wrong. I did it this morning, so forgot about the meds. <laughs> it's too many things. Sorry, uh, I do apologize. He has the medication for uh, this is from the AF patient. Can we switch to the next slide? I believe this is more important. The, this is the ECG. And uh, uh, this is, uh, as you look at the morphology, it uh, looks like a RVOT because the transition zone is somewhere V2, V3 uh, with the very high uh, peak uh, with 2, 3 and AVF uh, and positivity in lead 1. So we would say somewhere between the, uh, because it's monophasic and 2, 3 AVF, it's more biceptal because it's positive in lead 1, it should be more posterior, so right cusp or the uh, uh, pulmonary artery or right ventricle outflow tract. The patient had a previous ablation procedure, and uh, actually the best prematurity was found in the right cusp, not in the RVOT. The RVOT pacemap was not that good. And uh, as, you see, as you see, there was a severe ablation in the right cusp. And this was the prematurity uh, uh, as uh, was seen in that case. And we believe, because it's somewhere in between this, it's more septal summit. And the septal summits are usually ablatable using bipolar between the, uh, for example, RVOT. We will show you, hopefully, the, the, the positions. The, the, the bipolar doesn't work that much for the lateral summits, like negative lead one and more to the CS. But for the septal ones, it should work. So that's the, that's the plan to try. And uh, we started the procedure, it's a conscious sedation. We have one catheter in the, in the pulmonary artery and one in the aorta. And we maybe show you the, 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 uh, uh, what we recorded. So can you see the, RV, the, uh, the review screen? So this is uh, two, sig two, two signals from two ablation catheters. And maybe we can give you an X-ray. So can you first go for an X-ray to explain where we are? Můžeme přepnout na rengen. <coughs> okay, so there is one catheter, as you can see, uh, going retrograde to the somewhere to the aortic region. I will show you better in the in the uh, echo, and there is the other one that goes uh, from the uh, right ventricle into the pulmonary artery and back to the right corner, uh, the, the left cusp of the pulmonary uh, artery. And we show you that uh, in the echo. Can we switch to echo screen? So, in echo screen, you can see the pulmonary artery, you can see the catheter that is embedded close to the aortic valve. So, this is the RV catheter, uh, which is one way, and the other one is in the uh, right cusp. So, you can see the both catheters. So, on, uh, on, X, on echo, it might see they are very close together. On X-ray, you maybe uh, remember they are at least one centimeter between these catheters. And this is the position which we found quite interesting. And maybe now we can go to review screen. <coughs> and this is the this this is the ectopy from the ablation one is in the aorta. This is the right cusp. The uh, ablation two is in the in the the left cusp of the pulmonary artery. Can we make a marker and measure the prematurity? Oh. So okay, it's a, maybe the artery. There are tiny signals, but generally, yeah, something like it's it's a, a very good, I would say. And the plan is we try to also pace map. That, but in the right cusp, it's difficult to have a capture because it was a very heavy previous ablation. And uh, this is the pace map from the uh, left cusp of the, of the pulmonary artery so on the right side of the septum. And it's not perfect. Uh, it's, it's, it's so, so we believe because in the right cusp, there was temporary effect last time. In the left right cusp, and this is the RVOT or uh, left uh, cusp. So that's, that's the plan to try this two sides that was previously effective and this new side that is also quite early. Maybe you, if you want to comment. Oh, you, you see on uh, X-ray. Can you change to X-ray again? This is a layer of view and uh, one catheter is uh, hooked uh, in a pulmonary through the sheath uh, going up to pulmonary artery and going back. And that uh, sits on the extensions of myocardium, which I showed you in my first lecture on, on ice. Uh, and this is area of view, as you can see. Uh, again, the distance is about, uh, yeah, it's about one and a half centimeter, I would say. 
uh, and based on uh, the size of the electrodes. And then uh, the the uh, the other catheter is sitting in the uh, right cusp, uh, rather closer to commissure with uh, uh, with left cusp. As you can see on ice, if we can see ice, uh, this, this is uh, this Mercedes view of 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 the aorta and you see the shadow of the catheter just sliding a little bit but you can also see it on a, on a carto map uh, there is this green green dot and uh, that that's the position of the catheter now and the other catheter is uh, is in a pulmonary uh, is a pulmonary artery just above the valve as as you can also see on on this uh, nice uh, ice image so we, I think we can, yeah, yeah, this is now, you see the pulmonary artery and the valve and the catheter is hooked uh, in the septal side. So th the distance is at least one centimeter, which should be okay for bipolar ablation. And we believe that we should try. Yeah, so maybe... No, we cannot measure it because the, the because other catheter cannot. Not but we can just put the our, we can carton na velko nebo na tu no máme karton. Yeah, ano. Ne, ne, ne. Musíme dát RV. This is like estimation. It's no, can we go for RV and estimate where the RV catheter? Because only one catheter is uh, magnetic sensor enabled, so we cannot see. Can we put on the RV? Yes. Can we look and see the point where we have an Perfect. RV and try to kind of extrapolate where the RV catheter is? So th somewhere the point about measure. Fif 15 millimeters. So it's, it's yeah, maybe yeah, it's the too, too far. So in between this point and the ablation catheter and the other, no, no, you have to go the other way. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's it's not that close. No, yeah. this is this is incorrect. It's, it's, yeah, it's that 15 millimeters you measured before was uh, realistic. I on, say. on echo, it looks it's it's much closer. So, so we 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 in the we try not to ablate with less than five millimeters, obviously, because that makes no sense. Because five millimeters you can do unipolar, but not than three centimeters, because that's also probably won't be very helpful. Uh, and uh, we also been in the commissure. <laughs> we we tried to map the commissure, and the, the the signals there were not that that particularly interesting. I believe it's important to note that it always should not only the cusps but also the commissure is important part of the story. Uh, unfortunately, we, the, the extra systole is now uh, not that frequent, so we have to just take the what was now was the one yeah, extra was systole. One. Again, so very good signals, mm -hmm. uh, a bit far field, but you see it, it's early early signal in both catheters. Okay, uh, so b before we start, I would just to show you the interface of the of the bipolar signal, so of, of the ab bipolar ablation. So there are different ways how to do bipolar. We will be using this Osipka uh, kind of uh, uh, ablator that has the capacity to do bipolar. The important part here is the, that it, it, that we measure temperature from both electrodes. There are di different devices how to connect bipolar, but if you just connect to the normal generator, you have just one reading of the temperature and you don't really know what's happening on the other one because it's not designed by for this. But this one, it's really, you see two temperatures. So if we start to ablate, we can actually see really, uh, and we prevent exceeding the temperature. Mm -hmm. The plan is to do uh, 30 mils for both of these catheters and start to ablate with low and maybe increase to 20 maybe 20, 25, 30, up to one minute and see how the impedance will the drop <coughs> and what will be yeah. happening. Important part of this uh, system is that there are two pumps that mm -hmm. are uh, coordinated with the ablation and uh, they, they can run independently flow. So we have two f uh, irrigated uh, tip catheters. One is sensor equipped, one is uh, just uh, without sensor. And we will run uh, simultaneously uh, this cool uh, cooling, uh, you know, from two pumps, uh, which are part of the system. So th this is uh, this is about generator and uh, it, it, it can be done uh, uh, like homemade uh, adjustments but uh, this is a very professional system which uh, really nicely works so let's and see really how people, it will work uh, here Peter. the only so problem I, is I that uh, the people. ectopy is not very frequent so people, yeah, can you hear Peter. me can you hear me okay yeah. i was a little bit late so yeah. actually can you can you explain me so uh you apply for both cutters the same power yeah it's a bipolar so it it's has to be it, yeah, there's no the, other yeah. way they go okay. in between so but you cannot uh, you cannot apply just because it's in between them right so you cannot like make what? it it's a bi it's a bipolar, yeah, it's a bipolar. so <laughs> you, you ablate between both poles of the of this Catheters. 
Uh, you can do unipolar sequential. You, you have to have the two generators for unipolar sequential. Then you can change the, and it will probably give a bit of bigger lesion. But I mean, this is bipolar, so this is just to demonstrate the technology. Because we did bipolar with uh, Stockard, so it's a little bit different generator for us. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah. this is Osipka generator. This is designed to uh, enable bipolar ablation. Just with switching uh, one. Just you one can, you, now we can, with this configuration okay. of catheters, we can just apply unipolar from one catheter, unipolar from the other one, or bipolar in between. Perfect. Okay. That That's are the options. Occasional ectopy, so we will see. We, we can probably Okay, start. so maybe if you, you can see the, the parameters during the ablation, maybe that will be more interesting. You can see the ECG down on the cardio, so... So, so yes. Okay, so let's start with the 20 watts. What? I believe we are more or less in the same position, according to. Yeah, yeah the, 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 there's a there was a change that the, 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 this ectopy is lower in two tr in three that maybe from ice yeah. in the yeah. RVOT. So this is much lower. So I, I doubt this is the, this is not okay. our clinical no, one. We, we yes. have Setup is the same and I position. believe the, the position seems to be good. So let's okay. go 20 watts, okay? 20 watts and we increase to 30 watts. So we start, we should have the signals. So you see also the, the signals, the temperatures are good. The impedance is, is drop is small. So let's go 25. Uh, there is some impedance drop. So let's go. You see flow on ice. And both catheters, oh, you don't do you see, see ice? Okay. Can you show us the so ice during wait. the application, please? Yes, so you see nice. the bubbles. Bubbles uh, in both. Okay, and we may try to increase to 30, just for the last period of time. So go 30, and we stop then. The impedance is stable with some degree of of decrease. And let's go for one minute and stop. And now we'll see. And we can change different configurations. Obviously, I would still keep the, the, the pulmonary artery and maybe go to the commissure, maybe go to the other part, try to... Oh, do. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't uh, have that, that frequent ectopies. Let's to try really isoprotor. Oh, uh, this is different. Well, show me the... Ex uh, yeah, this is much lower, so I take, can take out echo. It's from ice. Because this is much lower. So probably we need the isoprotor no, to, okay. to try to challenge. Start with, uh, oh, this is still uh, not from the, the area. Can we see the real-time image for the audience? <coughs> there, was, live. there was ectopy, which is uh, from lower Ale part. Ale z sálu, tohle, nebo to jsme my? To jsme my. To okay, there is Didn't. ectopy. Yeah, this one is now coming back. Uh, okay, so let's stop. Uh, stop is up. So guys, so we are going. You are going to uh, to to introduce uh, isoprel. Yeah, we, we did. Isoprel? And it, there is some ectopy. Okay. There is some ectopy. But so still, maybe. the ablation is. So maybe. Me. Well, it's. Well, we we see. We cannot see any ectopies here. The, the it's our. So maybe we should. It's our screen. Ten asi ten druhý, spíš tenhle okay. ten se mi líbí, tenhle ten, ne, trošku adjustovat. Jo, můžeme, no, okay. promiň. OK, now we see your, yours, OK. Yeah, perfect. So we will try different configuration. Yeah. This is, yeah, yeah, we have, we have a, it's very similar, kind of, and this still, the ablation one is good, and the ablation two is, is which is the RV is, is was worse is was better so I maybe we can change now a little bit so, so we, we need some search ectopic. for no, better show, show me it's uh, can we see the last one hmm. yeah so it uh, takes uh, that's the problem this uh, looks good uh, can you review this screen I think this is better now the signal in the green one is better then you review see. screen for the audience. Yeah, you have it. So the 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 the, the, the second one is better. So we maybe can we can we can go here. We can go here. Let's go. Ablece. Let's get. We can go. Let's 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 go
So we are sitting again in a, a pulmonary artery in, a, in this extension and trying to pick up. Okay, let's go 30. Unfortunately, we cannot really see whether there is an immediate effect because the ectopies are not that frequent. The teploty, tepl temp temperatures are good, impedance no, drop is impedance like a uh, mediocre, so some, some I mean, uh, Can you show us again ice? Sorry. Show us again ice. Ice, please. Sorry. Sorry. Ice, please. Ice. Okay. You see that the, there is a... The catheter is uh, bended in a pulmonary artery and touching it's now with the there is a radio frequency noise. We haven't had a single. Are there any questions the from the uh, auditorium? Please, guys, do you have any questions? Stop. So let's slow down the real time okay. image. For the audience, the real time image. Has anybody in the audience uh, experienced with bipolar ablation? Doesn't seem so. So it's a kind of uh, you have to be at two sides, it's a little bit of manipulation for both sides to be stable because we waited for the transmission. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you, it probably may have changed, so it's, uh, you have to control two catheters at once, which is not that easy, I would say. And it's a special kind of uh, niche of, for bipolar ablation, some special arrhythmias. Well, mainly septum and uh, yeah. summit, obviously. Uh, but septum also, we, we, we did some patients with Structure heart disease, CT with uh, mainly dilated cardiomyopathy, as you know, is very difficult sometimes to ablate across the septum, and this can improve efficacy because uh, you create a larger lesion which grows from both sides, and they, they can finally even connect. Uh, if if it's like one centimeter thickness, uh, you can create very large lesion uh, using this bipolar configuration uh, for for uh, ablation. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Pepo, Pepo, we have are one question. Ways how to do Pepo, Pepo, we have yeah. one question from the yeah. auditorium, please. Yeah. Can we see the carto picture first? Yeah, we can give a big of carto. I uh, adjusted a little bit the uh, position of the, of the catheter. Can we add a, a right oh, ventricle and rotate? Add the right ventricle and rotate, please. So, it's, it's just above the valve and it's a septal. Septal and it's poster or septal for pulmonary artery and uh, right cusp for the left. Well, which electrodes we uh, can see from that non cartu catheter? So is, is that two three or three four? Or it's not the one two. Or, uh, one is the cartu electrode. That's uh, clear. But what was the other one? The, the non cartu. No, it's a bit different now. Yeah, it's but changed, what, what the electrodes uh, from the catheter we see on that map? The you see, you know, one, uh, one is a bit different uh, as morphology, as so it looks that we changed the one, exit. As a one, as a one. So the uh, bipolar, that one. What, what, what electrodes, uh, the green, as a, oh, okay, electrodes are the white ones. No, we so, are sorry, yeah, okay. between okay. distal bipoles oh, okay. of both catheters. Huh? So we can so, go, go to 35 yeah. volts unipolar. The, uh, yeah, well, the, there is a change in uh, in uh, morphology. Can morphology we show the new morphology? With a more more positive in a, with a kind of like a humpy. It was was different. Yeah, it was a so it's really different. Okay, guys. Uh, but you're okay. much okay, different. Oh, it's a little bit different. Yeah. It, it was different, but uh, now it's uh, again no, it's it's very similar. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> so, we'll with, with so which one is better for with these with new around. ones? And try so maybe we can. Well, we yeah, yeah, we will try to some additional. I would go yes. into the bottom, the arc, last like this, the, like the, the, yeah, the, the lower that the, the, the they had the better. This was the better. The, the problem is the arc cusp is already burnt a, a lot, so. So I'm a bit lower in the in the right cusp, so the distance would be probably bigger, but maybe it will cover okay. a larger area. Can you show, us, of can this, you show uh, us a real Pruka? Yeah. Can you show us a real Pruka? Pruka running. There, yeah, there is now ectopy. Nice. Se no. there, there is ectopy now. It's not so good, maybe, in the inner aorta. 
Or if you go higher, I don't know. Well, maybe we can, we can try to get with this. Teďka děláš tím pravokomorovým, pravokomorovým jo? Jo, jo, trošku jsem se snažil ho tam přitáhnout. A už skoro prolabuje. Ne, ještě, ještě je dobrý. Teď se zvětšil tam signál na něm. Ještě ho opřu víc. Tak, teď jsem se... Can we show, show, show us a big uh, ice screen to, to, uh, to see where you move to in the right, right cusp? Uh, it's in right cusp. You, you can see it better on on, on um, Carto. We are lower a little bit, but I can... Let me go higher. Uh, he, he went again higher, Peter. Uh, oh, but, but low, I don't know. So maybe... Maybe the, the you can, uh, is we on the contrary, go here because there was another vi violet point was yes, a good no, one. Down there, down Let's there go was here. Let's go here and then we uh -huh. give uh, 25, 30 thermal. watts. Let's go another application. What's it bit? We are now closer. If you to see the commissure. ice, we are closer to the commissure with Jude left. 25, 30 watts. No way, them. So we won't use that much high power, but uh, kind of we try different spots. So the impedance is good, temperatures are good. Can we increase to 30? As you see, the bipolar ablation is difficult because you have to control two catheters. The variables are too many. Temperance trošku klesla, možná po 30 sekundách toho nechme. Stop. We have a question for so we, we can, can maybe try... Uh, Hello, can guys, I ask? Yeah. We have okay. a question, <laughs> we have a question yeah. please. So I would just like to ask uh, which catheters are you using? So one is uh, smart, uh, it's not smart touch probably, without it's contact a thermal cool. It's a thermal the cool. one? Both are thermal cool, one is uh, carton NAV and the other one is uh, Biosense uh, uh, Celsius. Celsius. So one is NAV, uh, Navistar and the other one is uh, so obviously Navistar, smart touch. No, uh, no, we are no, in good contact. No, we no, see you can no, push no, more Navistar. because no, it's no, stiffer cut it than the smart touch, touch but no, no, the manipulation time sometimes is worse. Okay, thank you. They are both irrigated. Mm -hmm. So the problem is the previous ablation, which made the whole right cusp kind of not capturable, uh, and there is probably some already scar, so we have to somehow try something, uh, it's, it's not the de novo case that would... So this is ISO on, we have increased the cut, the, uh, I, the I would like rate. to ask uh, um, a small question. Um, I thought from uh, previous um, literature that with bipolar uh, ablation you have to, uh, the, the effect comes very, very late in the ablation. So I wonder why did you choose 60 to stop at 60 seconds and not uh, do more um, than 60 seconds? The other question would have been um, uh, why, uh, um, it might be also, maybe it will be um, less distance if you go under the valve on the uh, RVOT than over the valve. Thank you. If you go underneath the right cusp, you are getting closer to conduction system. Uh, which probably no, we, we, we don't the want. RBOT. The other thing is, uh, you, you mentioned that the longer application, the better. Of, of course, I mean, we are dosing it. Uh, we, we try, if, if it doesn't work, or if it will be mm. partial effect, we, we can prolong. But if you should not do unnecessary things. You know, if you can cut it in one minute, why to continue for two minutes? Because every prolongation can increase. Here you have limited uh, way how to control the lesion, you know? So it's uh, it's going in between, uh, but you don't see it how it uh, how it goes and uh, you know how big is the lesion. So I, I think this this is kind of like dosing of the of the effect uh, depending on effect on on ectopy. So far we have no ectopy now after isoproterenol challenge, uh, but it is still in 94 uh, heart beat. So uh, we have to wait until. The heart rate goes down, um, and uh, 
Yeah, so, that, so seems the, to be this, this application was better than the previous, yeah. but slightly ah. higher. So we may explore. Yeah. It would be nice to have a lot of ectopy, so you can do the ablation mapping or I, something I, like to see that there is an effect, so you know it's the site. But unfortunately, this is like a, you have a few beats, and then it's for yeah. five minutes nothing, which is difficult to even for mapping and also knowing yeah. the effect but of your ablation but lesions. But in fact, uh, just to, to, to answer again the question about duration of the application, I, I recently did in, a, in another center bipolar ablation with this technology, and uh, we, we did ablation between uh, great cardiac vein and endocardium. And I must tell you that there was a bigeminy almost, and uh, within a few seconds, uh, you know, it, it terminated, and then we prolonged up one minute or, or 90 seconds, and it was, it was done. It was you know, very nice application, very rapid effect. So it depends again where you are. If you have more thickness, because in that area you have uh, the whole thickness of the left ventricular wall. Here you have very small thickness. You, you see there is uh, just a little bit of muscle in between uh, aorta and uh, outflow tract, uh, which uh, sometimes it's even from these extensions which go to the pulmonary artery. Uh, you always can see some musculature above the valve. So these are just like few millimeters, but you know, if, if it's in three-dimensional space, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to, to get it with a unipolar ablation in that area. And here we, we try to direct the current to cover the area between these uh, best signals, uh, and both were a bit uh, far field, so it looks that the source is somewhere in between. And uh, so this is basically our idea here. And so far it uh, looks uh, relatively good because there was no ectopy after this uh, application. I, I, I would just add one thing. I believe the mo very important thing here is the selection. So you just do usually unipolar ablations and the bipolar we so far use for these failed procedures. And uh, so uh -huh. you try different, but I mean, you have to select good patients. One part, one possible indication is this summit, more septal summit. The other possible indication is the crooks of the heart. There's a recent Polish uh, uh, experience uh, that uh, it's even more ex <coughs> kind of effective for the in very inferior crooks of the heart. We also tried for the structured heart disease patients uh, with uh, 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 some septal scar yes. that we call, well, and there was endo-epi. Uh, no, sorry, no. that was a uh, right LV, and that was not uh, uh, that much it effective cleaner, because yeah. the, 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 uh, the the there the, is some the, change now in morphology. So of we this keep one. burning. Maybe we will extend obviously to one minute, and we just keep pushing. I believe the edema because there is so little kind of uh, space. So I wouldn't really care about the edema here. Okay. So let's so. let's let's we we do some safety burns because we had just one single extra since the last a burn and uh, a bit different. So let's keep burning. I mean, if we are on the right track. OK, so let's uh -huh. tady ještě přidáme uh -huh. teda. 32 uh -huh. rovnou teda. Go 30 watts uh -huh. and go one minute. Pojď svít na to na rengenu. Jsou trošku blíž, ale... The impedance drop is good. I hope you see the temperatures. About 37, 36, so there's no excessive. The problem with CS application for bipolar, you're still limited by the temperature if you're not using 8 millimeter tip. And uh, because there is a high impedance that's still kind of uh, still there. So usually for CS, at least the cases I saw between the CS and the LV endo, uh, there was a problem uh, with the higher power because the temperature went up. But I like that this, this device because it really shows you temperature from both catheters so you don't really exceedingly heat up the tissue. You, you can prevent the complications. There is also obviously the issue of uh, just targeting, also the, or damaging the coronaries. Uh, I believe the, we should be but they are very uh, they are careful. Much higher. There. You see, yeah, there is but a not left, for left this main. kind of configuration, but I mean, for some of those that you may try, so you should be aware as is an area to explore still. But you see, there is a left main visible on on uh, ice. If you can see ice, and if we, if you rotate, so this is still uh, the. LAD goes uh, much uh, higher in this uh, pulmonary uh, er, uh, area. It's point. It's yeah. point. It's so. Case, uh, okay, so we can have. We have 90, 90 seconds and we stop. Seconds stop. There are new paper from Sanji Dixit and Philadelphia group that they apply up to five minutes. In the
in the cusps and subarctic art area just around the commissure and that for that may help for some of those applications i mean unipolar applications up to five minutes so on, on continuous rf uh, uh, claiming that for some of these patients it might be good enough there are different tricks how to kind of enlarge a little bit yeah. the lesion there uh, obviously we show we should try step by step and I, I like to start low because sometimes it's just a little necessary but sometimes yeah. you need to just ramp up and let's 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 do it slowly step up okay so maybe we we did another just one single after pre previous one now we had did another 90 seconds lesion now like maybe you can go to the other lab and we will brief you we give some uh, iso and uh, we'll see the results okay okay uh, before we leave you uh, is there any question to this procedure doesn't seem so so we can switch to another room to, to cardio error ablation dane dane slyšíš nás okay ano slyším then we are back. What did you do up to now? We, 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 have done, uh, we have done nothing because we were waiting for um, so we are lucky. Thank connection you very much. To, the, to the Congress. Uh, so we waited with all the, all the, because we want to, there, 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 there will be little, little to be shown so we want to show everything what is possible in in uh, like in like in li life case all right so uh, just to uh, recapitulate we there is uh, quite a very weak response of sinus and not too strong response of av node to high frequency extracardiac uh, vagus nerve stimulation but anyway we should start uh, so first we uh, we will do uh, one or two lesions uh, from this uh, uh, right anterior ganglionic plexus sweet spot uh, from the aspect of right atrium and just adjusting catheter to the very posterior position of, uh, of uh, right atrium. It is not far from the sinus node, it's not far from uh, phrenic nerve, but it's uh, reasonably distant, so I think we are on, on a safe side and our setting is our setting setting is uh, 30 watts 30 seconds and we may give first uh, first burn here here yeah. a blade frequently acceleration of sinus is visible already there during the first burn i i think this is the case because yes. the Heart rate is increasing I don't know, 50. already. So this is a really sweet spot. Yes. And we don't look at the electrograms like Tolga Aksu uh, because uh, this works even without looking at uh, electrogram morphology. All right, so Sometimes there is like uh, acceleration and now sl 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 slow, uh, slowing down, but still it will be uh, after after slowing it will it will be it will be more than at the baseline, and we will give one more delivery just a uh, little bit septally blade here. Prosím vás, prosím vás, nemluvte mi do toho. Bot. Slyšíme se? Zlato bot? Já, já se nevidím vůbec. Já se nevidím. Can you show us the cartoon, some small screen? No, any chance? Když tak... Ještě jeden bot třeba. Oh, here. Tam nějak yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. All right. So two deliveries and of course we will, we will, uh, we will be ablating from the opposite side, from the left atrium. But because there is already reasonable acceleration of sinus rhythm, we may retest by, uh, by extracardiac vagal nerve stimulation. So I, uh, I will recheck the position of the catheter in the, in the, right, in the right jugular vein just now, and we, we, we will prepare the neurostimulator for next, uh, next can pass. You, can you show us floral, 
for the position uh, I think have... it is important to be uh, at, at exactly the same side, uh, but mm. not in, in this patient because in some, some pac patients uh, uh, some patients are very sensitive to the position of the catheter inside the jugular vein, not this patient be because we mm. tested multiple sites, upper, lower. Uh, uh, different bending and uh, re response b uh, was at all sides uh, comparable, but this is not the case. But now we are sitting uh, at the same site uh, that was tested at the beginning at the baseline, and we may we may give um, yeah we may test just now. I oh, know, I know. And there is still a sl some sort of slowing. And I think that there is almost, if we measure the longest PP interval, and if, if we measure the 61 BPM, if we measure the cycle lens just prior to, uh, just prior to, uh, yeah. Yeah. all right, so it's there so, is still uh, slowing from 83 to 61. So uh, sinus node is not innervated just now. And we will go, uh, even if there is reasonable acceleration up to 87, uh, please uh, show me the left atrium from anterior. I will, I will go back to left atrium, left atrium only. All right, trošičku nahoru. All right, so we are back. And I'm just in catheter, just to be contralaterally. It was uh, uh, at this, uh, at this. Carton, at big this screen, start. please. We may check it. We may check it again, uh, Carto. So you are going Carto to the right screen. superior position, right, or the left? Yeah. Prefer, All right. We may we nice. may add the right atrium map again to to check that uh, we are really just opposite to uh, right uh, atrium ablation sites, and we are there. It's perfect. All right, so we may uh, we may remove the right atrium, and we continue with the with standard delivery of 30 watts, 30 seconds here a blade. And it's frequently uh, frequently the case that the ablation from uh, single side, either left atrium or right atrium, it doesn't matter, is not enough to, to denervate, completely denervate sinus node. It should be, in majority of patients, it, sh it should be done in, from, not in majority, but in significant proportion of them, it should be done from both sides. All right, so, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe you, you, shortening? All right, so you it's probably shorter, yes. uh, realized uh, yes. uh, that after, uh, after the ablation uh, at the right atrium, when we accelerated uh, the sinus node, there was prolongation of, P of PQ. Of course, it is, it, it is, uh, uh, this is functional because the Wenkebach point was like 120. So when we accelerated from, so from 50 to, to 90, there was like functional prolongation of PQ. Uh, but when we, uh, when we ablated here, there is, uh, there was uh, auto, uh, auto blue, at least some uh, shortening, uh, shortening of PQ, but definitely we should ablate also inferior ganglia at the end. Uh. But yeah. it's, it's not usual in this region and to shorten PQ, no? Uh, yes, it depends. It, it, it depends if this side is able to denervate AV node. In some, 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 some patients, yes, but in some patients, not. Uh, so. Uh, I would, uh, we will give one more ablation here and uh, we retest again uh, by high frequency stimulation. Ablate. Já jsem si teďko nevšim, bylo při té vysokovrhodní stimulaci, byl tam pořád AV blok nebo už tam nebyl? Při té předchozí. Ta poslední, ano. Můžeme se na to podívat? Byl tam AV blok nebo nebyl? U poslední stimulace. Třetí stimulace byl. Poslední high frequency. Byl tam blok. Můžu se podívat? Jo, byl. Jo. All right, so two deliveries. 
and we will retest again. So I'll go a little bit deeper into the vein just to avoid any ectopy. And uh, I will adjust the catheter in the right jugular vein. Uh, it is not, uh, it's migrated a little bit, so I just to be bend, bend it more post, posteromedially like this. This is exactly the position, and we may, we may stimulate the vagus again. And I think it is already, it is already denervated. Sinus is denervated. We may check that there is almost uh, or negligible slowing. We measure the longest PP or AA interval just prior and uh, after the ablation. And you see 92, 90, 90. So this is stable. So after deliveries from both sides of, of, the, of the superior interatrial septum at the position of, the, of this right anterior ganglionic plexus sweet spot, sinus node is denervated. There, there is also some change in, in uh, uh, AV nodal uh, innervation because you see that we had reasonably long AV block and now there is only 221 or please, please scroll through the, uh, through the recording. I think there is only, yeah, there is slow, uh, nothing, nothing here from the very beginning. There is like two, three seconds without AV block and there are two, three non-conducted beats in, in 221 uh, fashion. So even, even this uh, superior ganglia ablations are in some patients able to, uh, to modify or modulate the innervation of AV node, but definitely AV node is not uh, completely denervated and it will be done subsequently by inferior ganglia ablation. And we may, we may start with uh, in, at the bottom of left atrium, please, uh, PA view. And we already talked before the, this uh, left atrium sweet spot, and I'm trying to, to reach this point. And please give us also ultrasound. Not, yeah, the... um, is not Pruka is not important. Please, Carto and ultrasound. Dane, Dane. Here's a question from, from the chat. Uh, can I ask you? <coughs> How do you program your high frequency stimulation parameters in the jugular vein? Dane, is there a question from chat? Okay, please. How do you program your high frequency stimulator when you are basic the, in the jugular yeah, vein? Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I hear just now. Um, okay. Uh, this setting is quite um, uh, constant, so uh, frequency is 50 hertz. Uh, pulse duration is uh, 50 microseconds. Uh, train duration is 5 seconds. And uh, the voltage uh, or output uh, is uh, based on uh, body weight. So it is 1 volt uh, per 1 kilogram of body weight, but maximum of 70 volts. That's, that's all. Nothing else can be... Uh, Modified because this is. I, I must say so we that modify uh, only, the passion only out, involved output this, according to the body weight. Dane, I'm, now, I'm struggling to reach the optimum uh, optimum side near the uh, pyramidal space to to modify the to modify the this posteromedial left ganglionic plexus. Maybe now I'm approaching. I'm. Kdyby ta projekce šla trošičku líp udělat. Jsem už na tom fialovém bodě, jsem někde mezi nima. No, nevím, jak já to tak tak, jo. No, co, no, co je to dobrý. A blade here. Again, 30 watts, 30 seconds. Jsem, jsem daleko, že vás tam nedotýkám asi. Je to tam vidět někde, já nevidím ten typ opravdu. To není ta projekce, jak to jsme jí měli. No. Yeah, to get the no, now you may appreciate, appreciate the intracardiac ultrasound view. This is exactly or yes. you are near it seems by that the, the stable and quite good side. contact. Yeah, but I I would like I would like to read this the other point uh, the other uh, 
dark violet, uh, dark violet side because this pyramidal space is really massive in this patient and it's very, I have difficulties to, to get there. If not successful, we go for, we will go, uh, we will go for coronary sinus. But one more attempt. Maybe. We have a question, <coughs> please. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello. So we have, a, we have a mic here, not, not functional. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Can you hear me? I can uh, hear. You, you yeah, can, can ask how we will translate. <coughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, my question is maybe a little bit missed, but how did he identify the place for the, for the burn? Because I remember the, uh, if it's anatomical kind of uh, approach, to uh, denervate the uh, sinus node. I remember the lecture from the London pathologist that's saying that the, uh, all dyslexia and uh, uh, distribution of the nerves are quite individual. <laughs> How do you identify the, the place? Because uh, I, okay. whether they yeah. did it while they're not watching yeah. or it's, it's anatomical approach. Uh, we, we, learn, uh, we learn by burning. Uh, this is simply, this is really empirical approach. But the fi uh, but now uh, our like uh, anatomical sites are uh, uh, quite standard in all patients. Uh, so please let me uh, let me uh, bleed here because we are. I finally read the optimum site. Look at the coronary. Uh, look at the eyes image because the catheter tip is exactly at the at the inferior inferior septum at the base of the pyramidal space, and it is space between right atrium, left atrium, and coronary sinus, and this is the sweet spot for, uh, this is the, uh, the major site of posterior medial left ganglionic plexus. Uh, Excuse me, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, yeah, no, on, what, uh, on, on which uh, parameters did you define your tags, your ablation um, targets here? Um, maybe it, it, the, the question repeats itself, but I um, didn't really understand why did you put these two uh, blue tags uh, right there and not maybe half centimeter uh, proximal or distal to it? Because uh, it's difficult to display he, uh, uh, explain here, because uh, look at ice again, because this is very standard position by ice. Eh? We are sitting at the like, inferior part of the septum when, when the, uh, you, you see this, uh, this pyramidal space. And we are, yeah, of course, you, it works if you are uh, uh, half a centimeter away, it works as well. But I, I, I try to center the, this. The, what you see just now, this is the optimum site. Of course, it is not a uh, blade here. It is not always enough. So uh, if this is not successful, if we, we, uh, we will not reach the uh, AV node denervation, we should blade uh, from coronary sinus. But this is the, this is the, we are relatively in the midline. Uh, when we look at, uh, uh, from the PA view, we are, uh, in the middle distance between mitral annulus and posterior ostium of right inferior vein, just in the middle and at the very bottom of, of, uh, of, uh, of the fossa ovalis. Stop. And I think and, it's... And, and it's was it the uh, same thing also for the right atrium or did you... Uh, ha, uh, was it also anatomical? Uh, I, can, uh, I can't hear really. Uh, uh. Uh, sorry, uh, was it the same thing for the first ablation uh, at the high right atrium? Yeah, definitely, definitely. This is anatomically defined and it works. Okay, thank you. There is no, no, no reason uh, to speculate why, <laughs> but that's true. All right, so we will retest the uh, high frequency stimulation again if there is still a nodal response or of. I should uh, adjust the catheter position. Oh, 
All right, the catheter is at the correct side. Sinus should be stable. Oh no. Yeah, you see one to one conduction. There is small prolongation of, uh, no, one, uh, one uh, non conducted beads, you see. So at the end of the uh, at the end of the high frequency train, which is visible on surface EKG, you see that the, there was prolongation of AV and one non-conducted bead. So we uh, again it is not fully denervated just now. I will go out of the left atrium, please LAO. Dana, nemohl bys na chvíli přepnout do vedlejšího sálu, jak jsou na tom sektopí. Coronary sinus. Dane, slyšíš mě? Dane, slyšíš mě? Slyším. Můžeme na chvíli přepnout do vedle do sálu, jak jsou na tom sektopí. No, tak oni tam byli dost... No, tak můžeme přepnout, ale tak já už... Já už jsem tady skoro hotový. tak jestli... Can, can I have uh, two minutes more? Okay. okay. Of course. All right. So now we ablate in coronary sinus. Um, um, our setting is 25 and I usually drag through the posterior superior part of, of the proximal coronary sinus. So 25, uh, 25 watts, irrigation 30 mils per minute and uh, you may start. And I usually deliver one minute on or 70, 80 seconds, it's usually enough. And I slowly drag from the little bit distal position close to this uh, left atrium sweet spot at the bottom of left atrium. Because it will complement the lesion from both sides and it should finally denervate of AV node. And one, one may, may be uh, all right. So I push li uh, the catheter a little bit out just to target the epicardial space and a little bit superior also. And I, I'm pushing posteriorly, so it is very safe in terms of AV node because we are much, much posterior to the AV node area. Stop. All right, and we will retest again. So I again adjust the catheter in jugular vein. Position, position is perfect. This is the same all the time. Pico is shorter, uh, it's typical. So I guess that there will be no response of uh, AV node because of this recent coronary sinus ablation. You see a stable, stable uh, AV interval. Nothing, and there is also no, uh, no. We may, we may test it also in coronary sinus, uh, in coronary sinus spacing, because we in, if we increase the coronary sinus rate uh, or atrium rate, it is more sensitive to, uh, maybe even higher. We may pace like 120, let's say, and we will uh, repeat the uh, high frequency stimulation. Yeah, all right. And even at this rate, there is no, no skipped beat. Yeah, we can see no it. No single non-conducted beat. All right. And please last, please last check the Wenkebach point again, because we know uh, at the beginning we tested. Uh, I haven't shown, but uh, the Wenkebach was 120 at the beginning. And now it, will be, it should be much better. So how many ablation did you apply up to now? Ten? I think it was already, yeah. So. All right, so it went from 120 to 170 or 175. Or so if you want to switch to the other room, uh, we, will, we will be waiting a couple of minutes and okay. we may, Retest some 
wie du äh, Sinus Nordrika very gain, wie äh, du okay, okay. Heavy Nodal, äh, äh, Testing, äh, Effective so Refractory we'll Period. Room, and please. Yeah. Ja. No, my, jsme, my jsme aplikovali tu poslední konfiguraci a pak tam žádná ektopie nebyla. My jsme yeah, we, we, takový šťourové, tak jsme ještě you, trochu... OK, sorry. No, sorry, I forgot. I didn't no, no problem. Uh, We, we uh, after after last application bipolar, there was no ectopy, but since uh, we wanted to make sure that there, there cannot be anything else, so we we did a little bit of fiddling with this uh, catheter in the pulmonary artery, and based on ice, we brought it down to the valve uh, level because there was this uh, change of morphology, so we felt that there might be some exit uh, cut and we did uh, one unipolar application in that area but it's now almost 15 minutes as you can see on on the screen probably you can post it on time on real time image uh, you can see carto also that uh, there is uh, online can you explain ACG. us all this, this, this is different ectopy all this carot and uh, the, the, yeah. there is no ectopy you see the and, timing and, and you see on left ah. on this is different oh, you see on left uh, static screen uh, Uh, can we go to the previous screen? It's another one. Uh, we, we had a pace, pace map from this uh, catheter in pulmonary artery, <sighs> which was pretty good uh, if you compare now with this... Uh, yeah, they uh, see it in the small screen. Yes, you can see it. With this right, uh, right panel where is the ectopy. It's uh, pretty good and you see there is some small delay because there is probably scar uh, already uh, after maybe yes, previous yes. ablations. Uh, or after the current ablation, but uh, it, it was pretty good. So we applied one more uh, from here, like in a unipolar fashion. And uh, so far we have 15.3 minutes uh, and uh, there is no ectopy coming back uh, from this area. So we, see again we feel that... Map? There are several tags of yeah, we, we, we can and you maybe can explain what, well, what each color doesn't does mean. Yeah, well, this uh, uh, bright uh, green is a commissure between uh, right and left, and we are looking at the uh, right cusp basically, and uh, these uh, blue uh, or violet points they are uh, points with a reasonable, uh, let's say, far field signal. And the green green dot in the middle, this mm -hmm. one is uh, where we could pace, but the pace map was not uh, that good as as from uh, from pulmonary artery, mm -hmm. but it was uh, it was also reasonably similar. So basically, we we try to apply between this area and this this uh, pulmonary pulmonary artery. So the the size of the cusp is, as you know, it's it's relatively small. It's um, One, one and a half, two centimeters approximately. So we covered uh, with a few applications this area. If we can add maybe right uh, ventricle and uh, we would need to map in addition pulmonary artery, but you see that uh, what everybody knows that uh, pulmonary artery is higher uh, than uh, right cusp or, or generally aortic valve. It's, uh, there is a disproportion and uh, we, we are sitting uh, really very nicely on that uh, uh, extension of myocardium. I mean, we slipped out. We slipped out, uh, intentionally oh, not okay. to irrigate. Yeah, okay. uh, well, but I show you already uh, this, that we, we were sitting uh, really in the, in the uh, lower part of the pulmonary valve cusp where you expect this extension and, uh, and we did application in between and then one unipolar there. And uh, we should have x-ray. Now, now we are a little bit more far away, but uh, we, we did not uh, control now the position of the catheters. Mm. And in the right, uh, right uh, cusp, it's a bit lower now, but we did application higher. Uh, that was more successful than this lower one, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Well, actually, I think that uh, the extension was very nicely visible on the eyes, and uh, actually, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. actually, uh, I hope that it, it was this, this just the original. Peter? You apply uh, last time, right? Yeah. So actually, Pepo, I have no, a question no, no, for you. It was not. Uh, so how much it, time? It was not there uh, before. Okay. How much time we will be uh, waiting for? For. Well, we we are trying uh, isoproterenol. We have okay. already 18 20, minutes. 20, 20 minutes. So 18 we minutes. Have. 20 minutes. Well, 20 minutes. Almost 20 minutes. So okay. maybe half an hour. It's different. It's okay. a different thing. So, uh, um, after all, actually, if I if I can comment, uh, I try to show you also during uh, this ice lecture that uh, these extensions of myocardium into pulmonary artery are quite common. It's uh, you can see it almost in everybody, and th this is really in many cases, I believe, the site of origin. But because y you just go uh, with mapping below the valve. You can uh, you can get very early signal and you can cut the exit into the right ventricle, but if you change the uh, uh, if you change morphology, it means that you should probably go to pulmonary artery and hook the go catheter upper. there, mm -hmm. and that that could be uh, more successful. I I did uh, you know a couple of cases in last year like this, uh, but some Chinese there is a Chinese group they claim that uh, you can ablate there eighty percent of all all ectopies uh, from outflow tract, they are actually ablatable from the cusp. So it's always uh, good to know this uh, maneuver. And uh, with, with the uh, help of sheath, you can you can get to pulmonary artery and, and you can bend the catheter in, in this, uh, bif bifurcation of uh, left and right. You have space there and then you bring it back and uh, you, you can map this area very nicely. So. This is my comment to to this uh, to this area. Actually, you have uh, over 20 minutes right now, and Pepo, if you wish, if you wish, because it is the last uh, last uh, actually uh, time to you to say something to the people here, okay. because uh, you probably are not I going it's back. Not last time for me, but uh, no, 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 last time today. today. <laughs> last chance. <laughs> you have we have one minute to talk. <laughs> okay, no, I I just would like to repeat that I am very happy that we could do this uh, today or the, this uh, this workshop not today but all all these uh, last uh, few days. I I am very happy that uh, many people uh, came. I'm very sorry for some friends who could not come because of tragical events in Ukraine, and uh, that's uh, I'm very sorry for that. I hope that in the future we will be again able to reconvene and, and meet again in Prague and enjoy together not only science but also some more fun. And I would like to thank two sponsors. Uh, we, we have a series of sponsors, as you can see on program. Without their help, it would not be possible to to do this uh, meeting. And it's uh, traditionally the, the other major sponsors are, are Abbott, Cardion, Medtronic. Biosense, Webster, Boston Scientific, and then uh, uh, a lot of other um, and many sponsors. others. <laughs> and I, th yeah, I thank them very much because uh, without their help, th this is really impossible to to organize anymore. And uh, also, I would like to thank to CCL company and to Media Center company, and uh, there are some others who cooperated with this uh, transmission, although we had some technical problems this year, but I believe that there is still room for improvement and uh, next year we will we will have a bigger meeting because it's 25th uh, anniversary. So uh, I believe that next year will be even better. And I I would like to invite you to, to come next year and celebrate with us this 25th anniversary. So. Safe trip home and uh, come back next year. Very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> we can see you. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate. So can we this go some, for the not, last? Sorry. This one. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't show the finger, okay? <laughs> sorry. This, okay. This were, no, these were thumbs. No, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? That. <laughs> the unappropriate finger. Okay, thank you, Peppa. Pe thank okay. you. So uh, let uh, can we go to, to for the last for time the last, to do the last, to the last to, lap? To, uh, <laughs>
Dane, slyšíš nás? Dvě minuty. So we end up with complete innervation of sinus node and AV node, and we did some uh, safety burns. Uh, f uh, first area for safety burn is here. Uh, look at the inferior uh, ganglia, specifically posterior medial, uh, po medial left ganglionic plexus, and uh, we add the s uh, small clusteral lesion going from the infi inferior fossa Uh, I am pointing the site with, with my catheter from inferior fossa to uh, inferior vena cava. And this uh, cluster complements the lesion around from all three sides, from right atrium, left atrium, and posterior proximal coronary sinus. So this is the most effective lesion for AV node, but of course it was, AV node was already denervated by uh, ablation from two sides, and the ablation from the uh, third side is just uh, s simply safety burn. And now uh, we may look uh, at the right atrium alone, And what we did, we did some safety burns uh, concerning the sinus nodal denervation. We usually, we started, originally we started here at the sweet spot, and we, we extended the line a little bit more septally, and it is usually uh, useful. But uh, again, in this case, it was uh, merely a uh, safety burn. So, uh, so this is the final uh, lesion set from the aspect of right atrium, and when we go Uh, to left atrium alone, map and uh, look at it from anterior view. You see, you see uh, uh, relative uh, this ablation in anterior vestibule. Uh, again, I am showing with my ablation. Uh, no, sorry, I am in right atrium just now. But uh, Helena can show uh, highlight these uh, pink points. Uh, these are not fragmented signal points, but these are ablation points, and this is. This is nice uh, safety balance uh, in terms of either sinus or AV node, and we, we do uh, in many patients uh, because it, it, um, it provides more, uh, probably more durable, durable uh, lesion uh, that denervates, permanently denervates uh, of uh, sinus node. And we tested. Uh, you saw the uh, improvement on Wenkebach from w 120 to 170. We checked also AVN, uh, AV nodal refractory period, which, which was 450 at the beginning, and now it is 220 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we haven't checked, I think we haven't checked the sinus node recovery time, but it was relatively normal at the beginning, so there could not be yeah. any improvement. And I think okay. that uh, if you have any yeah. questions, uh, I have no nothing more to add. Okay, fantastic then. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> And actually, I think that it was very important that you continue your journey because I named you like second pioneer of this procedure because after passion, I don't know anybody else like you, okay? So congratulations from my side again. And we will close the session. We close the workshop here. Thank you very much for coming. As Pepa uh, explained, we are so happy that even people are really starting to coming. And I really be afraid that well, the situation, political situation, uh, the COVID situation and political situation. So actually, I hope that we, were, we will overcross these limitations and this uh, crazy, uh, crazy politicians. And I think the science need to win, right? So we, we show the way how to make it. And hopefully next year we'll be much more quiet, much more pleasant. And we'll be more focused on bipolar, neuroablation, other ablation, pulse field ablation, and many others. And many others. And many others, okay? Okay, save, save back, save back, sorry. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Thank you.